All right, Twitch, how's it going, guys? We are back with the North American Bear Dunn Championships. Thank you so much for sticking with us. Apologize for the uh, for the delay there. Um, uh, I was told that while Matt banning uh, Zab's house caught on fire, uh, so that is uh, that. He's would okay. Be I apologize. He's okay. He is okay. He is okay. He's guys. probably still going to get 450 kills in this match. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> even though he's not playing in it, he will probably still, he's <laughs> still get right. the damn kill. I apologize. I apologize. We are we are watching the third place match. I'm getting all excited for that championship. I'm yes, sorry. We are. have we have SMW and Cuck. Uh, Cuck with a uh, solid performance yesterday in, in all their matches. Of course, running into one E, uh, which was just a brick wall for them. Um, but thankfully, in this match, we are definitely going to see uh, two teams. Uh, a bit more equally matched. Um, Soren, uh, tell us a little bit about what we can expect to see up in in uh, in, in the upcoming match. Well, I think it's going to be really interesting because obviously yesterday these two teams played a best of one, in which um, uh, Cuck came out on top. But that was only after uh, there was a very close first half, which was actually a tie. And then the second half, unfortunately, SMW Banshee had to leave uh, to attend to some real life uh, issues, and uh, such as mowing the lawn, I believe, was the consensus we came to. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that that obviously made SMW a much weaker team, and they ended up losing that second half. So now that they're going to get a chance to, uh, to to play a three map series against uh, Cuck, hopefully having having their full strong lineup this time, um, it should be interesting to see what the result of that looks like. Excellent, excellent. Uh, and I, this... uh, I do believe also we are in the prize pool now because I believe we are paying out to the top three teams. So the, whoever wins this tournament, this, this match, will actually be receiving uh, some money from the prize pool. So that's, that's right. Money that's on it. the line today. Exactly. So uh, that's it's pretty big, uh, pretty big uh, pressure in this match then. Pretty big motivator. Uh, it's got to be. Um, as uh, as as I'm sure uh, you are as well, Soren. Most uh, most players in the Verdun community are in it for the money. Um, <laughs> I just want to specify for the games, right? The price pool <laughs> is right. a thousand bucks of games. <laughs> games, that's right. Games, games, games. So if I does not sweet sweet Steam codes, yes. Exactly. If I does not <laughs> trade the dollar bills, folks. Uh, so I believe, uh, Soren, was this the map that we saw uh, SMW? Oh no, this is the map we saw uh, the Cucks run into against One E. Is that right? Um, yes, I believe so. And actually, I think SMW and um, uh, I believe SMW and the, and Cuck actually played their last match on this map. So it's interesting to see them uh, both feeling confident on it and deciding to play it again. So a rematch the whole way around then. Well, we are going to go through Ayn as our first map. Our second map will be our Twa, and our third map will be our Gon. So it should definitely be interesting to see how that goes. Should we need that third map? Yep. Uh, right now, just uh, just for our viewers, we are uh, watching just a quick warm-up. Uh, SMW uh, does appear to have most of their team in the match. Um, we have the Cucks taking their Cuck time. And, uh, but, and, Ar and Arcana play playing beautifully. Just uh, Arcana is kicking butts and taking names. <laughs> yes. Uh, as yes, yeah, indeed. we we saw Arcana stand out in more than more than one or two games uh, yesterday. Um, so uh, let's uh, let's go over Tannenberg. How much do we know about Tannenberg, Soren? Uh, like uh, the most, we mostly we've talked about the uh, the larger uh, larger player base that we're going to see. Uh, what are what are some other game changing features that we're going to see that you think might uh, might really do some uh, do some work on the competitive scene? Well, let's see. From the announcement, we don't have too much information. We do have some screenshots, um, which you can find, I'm sure, on the uh, Tannenberg Steam Store page, which look pretty interesting. So there's definitely going to be some new maps. We're definitely getting at least two new factions. It's been confirmed that we are getting the uh, Russians and the Austrian factions in the game. So that will definitely be very interesting to see. Um, I think... They may have. Um, I think they've talked about a new 64-player game mode, which is going to be introduced, which will definitely be very interesting. Obviously, 
They the devs have done some tests with 64 player uh, matches in this game uh, in private servers, but it's never really worked too well because obviously most of the maps were designed for 16 versus 16 matches. Um, so obviously 64 player does have some trouble, not necessarily performance wise, but definitely balance wise as far as the way the squads are balanced and the maps are designed. Um, they're designed to be played with 32 players, so it'll be interesting to get some of those larger, you know, 62 player designed maps. I think that's going to be one of the biggest selling points for Tannenberg. Uh, so you, uh, we have the we have the larger scale. Is the is there is there a concern in the existing Verdun community uh, that a lot of this uh, at these these added layers might kind of take away from the sweet simplicity that that Verdun is right now? Um, I think there is some concern, but obviously Verdun is still going to exist in its current state. It's not like they're changing the way the game works now. They're just adding on to it. So I don't think people are too worried about it, because if they add on stuff we don't like, we just don't have to play it necessarily. Hopefully the stuff they add we do like, and I think, I personally, I have confidence in the devs that anything they add will uh, at least be interesting to a certain uh, group of players. Right. And and we can... We can uh... We can always. This isn't a console. We can. Yeah. Uh, we can always just go right back and play Verdun. Exactly. <laughs> and and I I think it's for me personally as a history fan and as a fan of World War One games, it's exciting to just know that they're going to be producing more fronts because there are so many interesting fronts we could have other than Tannenberg. You know, this is just sets a precedent that okay, they can do Tannenberg next, but then after that, they could do you know the Alpines Front, or they could do the the uh, African African Theater, or, or whatever they want to do. That, that that that's an interesting idea and that has interesting map design elements and interesting mechanic uh, innovations. They can do that, uh, and and it's good to see that Verdun has made them enough money that that that's something they can continue to do. Uh, Verdun ended up being, or has ended up being a a much bigger success than I think even Blackmail Games, the developers, uh, had um, had expected. Fred, I know that you uh, have some personal experience with Blackmail Games and the devs over there. Uh, very small studio. Do, do they uh, do they do they see Verdun as as the big success that we do? I think so. I think they're also a very humble team. Um, it's a fa it's a fun fact actually that Blackmail Games was the first studio we ever interviewed on Twitch. That was like some three years ago. And really, I did not know that. Yeah, it was our very first interview, and ever since we've always followed them. We've covered their stuff like pretty substantially on the site, on YouTube, on Twitch, and they're. I, I mean, I love their commitment. At first, it's funny because when we did the interview three years ago, they were still in early access and they didn't know that Verdun was going to be such a success um, on Steam. Um, and so when I, I remember asking them the questions like, what, what's next for Blackmail Games? And they ha they, it was a big question mark at the time. Um, and it's kind of nice over time to have seen the studio and the devs because you know, at the end it's not even a handful of really dedicated and talented developers that are working on this game. Um, it's kind of nice to see how they um, stay true to the game because the community was committed to the game and, and I think they really uh, kind of... I, I, I'm just a big fan. I'm, I'm a huge fan of the studio and the game and the community around it. Um, I'm glad that we're doing this stuff. This really does seem like uh, like a very different take. I mean, everyone uh, everyone was so hyped when uh, when Battlefield One uh, was announced that you know this major franchise was going back to back to these old style shooters. Uh, uh, in this case, World War One was even further back than previous Call of Duty games, previous Battlefield games that were, uh, I believe, always World War Two. Um, and wh the whole time, yeah. uh, you know, Verdun yeah. is just kind of sitting there raising oh, their hand, sure. politely saying, "Hey, we've been doing <laughs> this for a little while, guys." Yeah. <laughs> And the devs have like a human connection to the history of uh, the, the, this part, this part of time of history in World War One and stuff. Like, uh, just the main developer, he like he was profoundly marked when he went to school on his uh, on, on a big school trip to the fields of Verdun when he was just a kid, and they basically like laid it out to all these kids the horror of like what that battle was and just how bloody it was, and it stayed ingrained in his head <laughs> as he got as he got older, and then he started coding. Wow, uh, were you uh, were you aware of the history behind Verdun as as a as a sweet little French boy, Fred? 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, they teach you that at school, honestly. Like, they're pretty heavy handed. Well, oh, least... they have school in France. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> That's good. I didn't, I didn't. Okay. That's good. <laughs> yes, we're, you know, we're a word power. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like that you laugh. Power. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you have a kick with that. Of course, uh, there there definitely does seem to be an attention to detail in the game, uh, especially when it comes to the the uh, you know very World War One gritty assets of of the look at things. Uh, Soren, are you much of a history buff? Are you aware of how how accurate some of this stuff is? Yeah, I am a pretty big history buff, and a lot of the stuff in this game is, is very accurate. They've based a lot of the map layouts even on actual historical trench layouts from they found from from old documents. Um, uh, especially the map Fort Duamont, they put a lot of work into uh, into designing it to be as realistic as possible. Uh, there's actually a very interesting video that came out recently on the the uh, Great War channel on YouTube, which uh, they actually visit uh, Fort Duamont in real life with the Verdun devs, and they go over, uh, they walk around, and they show them the different parts of the fort and how it inspired them to design the map and all that stuff. It's, it's a very interesting video to watch. I would recommend any, anyone who hasn't seen that to go check it out. Because more than more than uh, maybe just about any game uh, from this era, uh, this is truly trying to simulate trench warfare and uh, kind of like we talked about yesterday, picking your spots, uh, not taking unnecessary risks, risks opening yourself up to uh, to you know getting a squad wipe, things like that. Because that 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 is that is hugely damaging to your strategy. Yeah, obviously the gameplay, it's impossible to simulate World War One gameplay and still have a fun game because you would be sitting in a trench for six months, then you would hop out the top and instantly die. That would not make for a very fun game. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, I think they've done a very good job of balancing the realism of the his his history of the maps and the weapons and the uniforms and all that stuff, and then balancing it and, and, and making a really fun game based on all of that uh, historical content. Uh, yeah, thankfully we are not uh, we are not uh, casting this this game for the next six months. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> watching watching dudes get gonorrhea in a trench or whatever happens there. Uh, but it does look like uh, Nord Manon, the uh, the admin of the match, is getting ready to uh, restart and uh, get this uh, third place match started between SMW and the Cucks, both sitting with seven right now. I believe we might be taking. Um, taking our, or starting a starting game with seven on seven. Yeah, I mean, obviously, if the teams get more players, they can join uh, as the match goes on. But uh, and for reasons of time, I think we'll be starting the match relatively shortly, uh, regardless of whether or not they both have eight players. Indeed. Uh, and so, uh, just so uh, our viewers know, uh, we are going to now be playing uh, best of three format. So up until now, you've been seeing the winner of two halves. Uh, whoever takes more trenches in that time uh, will be the winner of that match. We did that in both group play and the semifinals. Uh, we are now going to uh, see at least two different maps in a single round, or in a, sing yeah. in a single match, I should sh should say. Um, first round here is going to be played on uh, Ein. Am I saying that correctly? Yes, I believe that is correct. Uh, That's the common pronunciation, at least within the community. <laughs> uh, and and Soren, do you know the <laughs> Soren? Do you know the, uh, the 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 next map we're gonna see? Um, let me double check. I have them here. Uh, we are going to see the next map. We will see is Artois, and if we do end up going to that decider, it will be Argonne. So it should be an interesting series, that's for sure. So that third map only only if the first two are split. Yep. Uh, and uh, just so people know uh, what exactly what is on the line, we are looking at a $200 prize going to the winner of this third play place match uh, yep. uh, in the form of game codes. Yeah, and, uh, and that's a very good prize to have. Certainly better than go going home with nothing. That's right. And more important than that, we do have pride on the line for these teams to be able to say they came in third place in this tournament. I think, uh, I think most of these teams that came into the group pool uh, knew that it was going to be either one E or PC that won the tournament, and those were going to be the first and second place teams. So for these teams, getting third place is definitely the height of the achievement they can achieve in this tournament, and I think both of them are going to want to achieve that. It looks like we are getting uh, ready signals from both sides here. Um, 
we are just waiting for, I believe, the restart. Uh, hopefully, we'll get we'll get Entente on attack right away. Um, hopefully, uh, the the chicken that I sacrificed during the break uh, is going to give us uh, good fortune in uh, in who attacks first. <laughs> Which is to say, I, I ate some leftover chicken. Good for you. <laughs> hey, eating leftover chicken is a uh, is a pretty good way to uh, do things. It's also a pretty good way to to make your kitchen smell like fart when you pull it out of the when you pull it out of the fridge right away. Uh, I've just Very noticed. Very well said. I totally agree. I totally agree. <laughs> it's so true. Like mo the moment you open up that Tupperware. Um, Oh it's man, there's over. no transitioning back into World War One from this. <laughs> How we get to some of the places we get to, no one will ever know. No, indeed. Alright, looks like we have an 8-on-8 eight -eight game. Uh, Nord will be starting the match in just a second here. Um, you can only buy so much time talking about farts and chicken. You'd be surprised. <laughs> Here we go! Yep, looks like we are starting now. Uh, match number one of three uh, taking place on Ayn. Uh, seem to be, uh, uh, like, it remind me of what uh, your analysis on this map again. I, I, I seem to remember you saying this was a much better map for long-ranged uh, uh, long specialists. Definitely. We're going to want to look at players on SMW like Banshee and Fabian to do very well on this map. Uh, and on Cock, we're going to be looking at players like Dragon Ken, Dragon's Ken and the Black Hand, or even Who Am I Blowing, uh, to, to be good pickers for these teams. Those are definitely going to be some of the more highlight tra uh, players for this, uh, for this game. Okay, so that chicken died in vain. <laughs> yep. We Your are prayer hoping. Has, <laughs> prayer was not answered. Uh, we are we are hoping for an entente attack start here. You have uh, suffered a, a flatulent kitchen for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> a flatulent kitchen. <laughs> That's somebody's Xbox Live tag for sure. <laughs> definitely, definitely. XX a flatulent kitchen. XX five nine four twenty. Definitely. 